What's up, Nerf Nation? It's your boy, Nomarico, and we're back with another Blaster Review. Now, today we're actually going to be shifting away from the pro-level Blasters I've been hitting recently and going back to the N-Series. The N-Series. Admittedly, a lot of people have had negative things to say about the Blaster series so far, primarily regarding the use of new dark types. Everyone's saying, oh, we need to go to the half darts, we need to do this, we need to do that. Let's be honest here, at least they're better than the Elite Standard Darts, which I know that's a low bar, but hey, it's a step in the right direction. The end series no matter what you want to say about it, it at least has offered us some really cool looking blasters. There have been people out there on Reddit and on other nerf forums that have been saying, oh, they look cheap, they're cheap, they're horrible. The plastic's actually really decent. We we're going to be looking at a blaster today that had kind of a silent release. They didn't really announce it very well, um, but it's actually really cool. Of course, you've seen on my channel the Agility and the Pinpoint, as well as the Ward. Today, we're going to be looking at the Strike Back. Now, the Strike Back, it is a pump-action blaster with an internal clip system, internal magazine, whatever you want to call it. And it loads 6, comes with 18 darts, and has dart storage on the blaster itself. This was not one of the ones that was previewed, necessarily, when uh, the N-Series launched at first. And it took a little bit to hit the store shelves. It is available at Target, and it ranges at the $25 price point, $24.99 to be exact. Uh, so it is right there between the pinpoint and, say, the Shadow Storm or the Storm Shadow, whatever they're calling it. Sounds like a G.I. Joe character. Uh, and the Infinity, which is at $39.99, respectively. So we're going to open up this bad boy and take a look and see what it has. Oddly enough, what one thing this blaster does remind me, just looking at at it. Uh, it kind of reminds me of the Ultra 3, which is not a bad thing, um, minus the entire tomahawk that might hurt if you hit somebody with it. So let's open this bad boy really quick and see what's inside this huh, opened up box. Now, the blaster, you can see it right here itself. I can tell you that this the instructions are on the box itself, um, which, you know, I guess that's kind of good. That means that I won't toss this box away while I'm putting it together. You do have the little plastic strips here. Let's go ahead and cut these out. Okay. That's relatively easy. And there's some tape here on the sides. Let's just snip that tape. Actually, screwdriver cuts right through that. Oh, boy. All right. Slide this blaster out now. Why are you being difficult? I do not know, but it's okay. Oh, it's stuck on the rail. Slip this blaster out. And we have our blaster right here. Of course, you have the pretty side that has the Nerf logo in white. That is an elevated logo again. Nerf logo is on this side, but it is not painted. Let's set this blaster down here. And I'm going to assume that our darts are stored in this little pouch setting right here. I have to hand it to them. The way they design these uh, boxes, it's kind of neat how an open box item can hold these things. We have an explosion of darts. They are just folded up inside of this box. All 18 are in here. Speaking of darts, uh, for those of you who are adopting the N1 dart type, uh, Target actually now is selling an 80-pack for $14.99, which if you do the math, seeing as 20 sell for $4.99, that is quite the deal. You're essentially paying for 60 and getting 20 for free at that price point. I'm gonna be destroying this box here really quick because I do not collect boxes. And we have our dark storage. Now it's kind of cool that they provide you the dark storage here that you can clip on because that way if you are the type that does not like dark storage on the blaster, you don't have to put it on. Um, me, however, I do like dark storage on the side. And it's nice that you have not only on the stock, but you have it on the side as well. So we're going to clip these on here. Uh, of course, once you put these on, the way that these are clipped in there, um, it's going to be very hard to take them out. So if you're going to be painting or modding this blaster, paint these first. Which, I'll be honest with you, the, uh, the way that this blaster looks, I might buy another one just for painting purposes. Keep this one stock colors, because I do like the color design. However, 
If anyone's out there a fan of Fallout, and you know that I am, this looks like it would make a pretty cool little Institute rifle uh, mock-up. And now, loading this blaster, of course, you just prime it, and that does reveal the inner clip system here. And it says it loads six, so we're going to put in one. Ah, that slid into the barrel. One. Two. Three, four, five, six. Okay, then it loads three on either side here. Let's do go ahead and take care of that right now. now I'm not a big fan of this, what I'm seeing so far, because the way that this looks, any jostling around, these might knock down, and that defeats the point of dark storage and then we got the three in the back or I should say six in the back now that means that this blaster with the dark storage it can hold 18 darts and it comes with 18 darts so they're bucking the trend there of providing more darts than what the blaster can hold on it and I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm okay with this because it does hold 18 and you have dart storage. Of course, a better deal would have been to get the Infinity that comes with 80 darts and holds 40 in the magazine. So now we just put this blaster back into its location and it is primed and ready to go. Now, one thing I want to point out is that you will see that this orange piece, it stays back. That launches forward once the dart launches. That's a cool little feature. I dig it. And then once you prime it back, it pulls back again, and you fire, and it shoots out once more. So kudos on the ingenuity there. That is a cool little feature. It looks pretty neat. I dig it. The blaster itself does have one tactical rail up here. Uh, so Coop, if you're watching, they did you wrong. Only one tactical rail. Now, of course, with the tactical rail up here, you can easily put a sight. And that's kind of neat. Or if you wanted to put a light, that'd be pretty cool. But they missed out on the opportunity to put a tactical rail down here for lighting purposes, especially seeing as this handle, it's pretty comfortable. Just hold right here and aim and fire. Now, regarding the power of this blaster, uh, admittedly, N-Series, it does go anywhere between 80 to 90 FPS. Uh, we will see how this works because historically speaking, internal clip systems, you run into the same issue as a Smart AR where they start to lose power as you go down the, the actual clip. So I don't know if that's going to be the same case here, because so far with the N-Series, the Smart AR Blasters have not suffered the same issue with losing power per barrel that you use. Now, regarding the comfort of the blaster, I'll admit, this is actually pretty comfortable. This stock, in spite of being short, it feels great to hold. And if you're a left-handed shooter like myself, that is really good to side up with. So, now, I will tell you that you're going to run into the same situation that you did with the pinpoint, that there's nothing really to aim with. This right here could have popped up a little bit more to add more for an iron sight, but, um, I mean, I guess that's, that's so uh, uh, have to do. You know, of course, you do have the tactical rail up here, so if you wanted to put an additional sight up here, which I probably will, um, with this color scheme, it might look good to use either the blue red dot sight or maybe even one of the modular sights up here might look okay. But, again, that's, that's up to you what you want to use. I will tell you, though, that aiming just like this straight, it is kind of hard to aim because there's no real iron sight to line up with. This part right here, you can't see past the blue. So, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Now, comfort-wise, it does feel good. That prime, it feels pretty neat. It's pretty very smooth. And the power of this so far... Well, it does shoot pretty decently. So let's go and run this through the chronograph and do the numbers.
All right, so we got some impressive chronograph numbers with this blaster. We are actually now in the parking lot doing a distance test with the strike back. Gonna do a couple of shots here, maybe two angled, two straights, and see how far they can fire. We'll be back with those numbers. All right, with the straight shots, we got an average of 65. Uh, we got 60 and 67, so split that right there around 64, 65 feet. Uh, for the angled shot, we got 88 feet. So right there between 90 and 85 is where the two uh, darts landed. So all in all, not too bad a performance for the distance test from this blaster, but not the greatest of the N series so far. Uh, up next, the action test. All right, 10 shots down the basket. I went ahead and added this little uh, Old school elite red dot sight. See if that'll help me aim. Probably not, but eh, worth a try. So we four were about 50-50, so not too bad for accuracy. I will tell you that uh, the sight, it uh, was aiming a little bit higher, and the problem that we're running with the N1 darts is kind of like the Elite darts. They'll go straight, and then suddenly they just curve out of control for some reason. That's a dart issue right there. Up next, my final thoughts regarding this blast. Okay, so I am back with my final thoughts regarding the N-Series Strike Back. Um, so, you know what? It's not terrible. It's not terrible. That is one thing I can tell you about this blaster. It is not terrible. It's not the greatest thing, but it is by far not the worst blaster out there. Um, it's fun. It is absolutely fun. It is great fun as far as I'm concerned. Kids are going to love this thing. Uh, and even some adults that aren't really hobbyists are going to enjoy it. Uh, here's what it's got going for it. First of all, the dart sword. It's a nice touch. Thank you, Hasbro. Um, I think that's really cool that you actually have this here. You don't have to worry about fumbling in your pockets or anything like that. But I am going to point out that what is good about it is also what is not good about it. Um, this dart storage, it is very loose. So a couple of them are pretty secure there. They're not going to you know jostle around too much. But this middle one right here, that slides in and out so easily that just by doing this vigorously, you can lose a dart. And that is not good, especially when you are running around with a blaster. Um, and it seems to be a universal problem with all the dart holders on both sides. So because of that, you know, again, good try, but do better. This is a quality control issue on Hasbro's behalf or Nerf, um, whatever. ICS systems, look, I'm not the biggest ICS fan. However, I know some people really love it. I think it's cool that with a shotgun style blaster, you just load the ammo in there and then you get six shots and boom, you go, you reload. And you have enough to reload three times with the dart storage. That's why they give you 18 darts. So that's kind of cool. The other thing I really do enjoy about this is that little sliding action right there when that just goes boop like that. Uh, of course, I just blocked the dart from shooting out. So, you know, that is a really cool little nifty feature. I like the ergonomics of this blaster. This priming handle, it is a little bit small for my adult hands. However, for a smaller child, this is going to be awesome and amazing. And it's just great fun. Uh, the rail up here, of course, you know, they could have done something more with this. Maybe put a rail on the side. Maybe even include some sort of target sight, maybe an iron sight that actually works. Because again, much like the rest of the M-Series, it is hard to line up with this blaster because of the fact that you have 
that blue shell right up here that blocks this orange nub from being seen and being lined up here. So the aiming on this thing is not the greatest. Uh, as you can tell by the accuracy test, the N1 darts are just not doing good at all. Like we're talking, I think we got hosed again this time. Uh, I, I'm really starting to believe that Nerf uh, marketing team just, they don't know how to tell the truth. And here's the, the honest part. If you're going to tell me that, oh, it's a super accurate dart, it is more accurate than before, it's more accurate than Elite, and I'm getting the same accuracy percentages that I did with Elite darts, you're lying to me. You are flat out lying to me. It's kind of like what happened with, with the Ultra Line, pinpoint accuracy. No, it's more accurate than Elite, but it's not pinpoint. Don't lie. Don't exaggerate. Just be honest. People will respect you more for being honest. Regarding the price of the blaster, $24.99, look, that is, in all honesty, for what this is, it is right around that price point where I would be expected to be paying uh, for a fun blaster like this. However, when you are looking at the Pro line starting at $29.99 with the Torrent, it's kind of hard to pick this one up when you can get better performance, stock, and better accuracy and pretty much the same concept of fun with the pump action through the torrent. So, you know, there you go. Who is this blaster for? This is definitely for the eight and up crowd. Um, maybe even a little bit younger. These N1 darts are not very um, hard hitting, I should say. Uh, not that they don't fly fast. They do fly fast, but they're not going to hit you hard. When you get hit by this at 85 feet per second, it's not as bad as getting hit at 85 feet per second with a half dart. So, you know, I definitely do dig what they're trying to go with this. Um, it is definitely more safe for smaller hands and smaller children. So I, I appreciate that they're doing faster flying darts that don't hit as hard. Now, are adults going to like this one? Obviously, yeah, I, like I said, I, it's fun. It's foam flinging. Foam flinging is all about fun. And if you don't think it's about fun, maybe you should go and find another hobby like Airsoft. So... Would I recommend this for anybody? Uh, absolutely I would, only because of the fact that, you know what? It's unique, it's part of the N series. So far out of all of the N series I've uh, had, this one is probably my favorite. Um, and I did like the pinpoint, but the pinpoint's gonna become even better once I do a half dart conversion on it, which has already been done by other hobbyists out there. Um, this one though, again, it's, it's just fun to play with. I, I, I like it. Uh, it kind of like, you know, gives me an idea of walking down the hallway in the middle of the door just, you know, start unloading six rounds, shotgun blast, you know, hip fire and having a good time with it. But yeah. Now, what could be better about this blaster? Obviously, uh, if this was a internal clip system that used half darts, duh, that'd be a lot better. Maybe there's a modder out there working on it. I don't know. Not me, not yet at least. Um, now, other things I would do, again, you know, correct the issue with the dart storage. And other than that, this, this blaster has a lot going for it. Ergonomically, it feels really comfortable. This grip is great. That trigger size is perfect for an adult hand, uh, for an adult index finger. Uh, unless you actually have like a massively swollen finger, you are going to be able to fire this thing comfortably and not have to worry about that. Um, this actual knuckle uh, guard right here, that works really well. Um, yeah, this is... Again, this is well done, Hasbro. Well done. Um, I would probably say I'd give you a P, you know, if I was to grade you. Because, again, what's knocking it off is the dart storage and the fact that it's it's the N1 darts. They're just not, they're not performing the way that you promised they would. So, um, if you can actually pick it up for a little bit less than $24.99, I recommend doing so. I have not seen this one go on sale yet. I know that a lot of places are now starting to have sales on the N1 line, sorry, the N series line. Uh, you can actually pick up a pinpoint for $15.99. That's $4 off of retail uh, over at Target and at Amazon. Um, and then the agility is only $7.97. The ward is still at the $5 price range, which I'll be honest with you, that is a worthwhile blaster if you want to get into the N series, uh, especially if you are playing in, uh, I would say, groups where they consider the N1 darts shield breakers. You have a two-shot shield breaker right there in your pocket. So I want to thank you all for watching Secondhand Blasters. Until next time, keep on blasting. <laughs>